Man, to say I have the man himself on the line. ODG, good morning. Tell us what's good, what's good, what's good. Yeah, man, everything blessed, everything blessed, man. Out here representing Ghana as usual. Currently in London, you know, it's my 10th mm. anniversary. So yeah, celebration yeah, yeah. yeah. Celebration all around, man. True, you know, true, 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 true. We're going to continue to represent Ghana to the world as usual. Charlie, this this is a, a huge milestone for yourself. Ten years on, yeah, yeah. We, know, we didn't expect that after you brought Azon to the story would have been like right. this. Right, right, right. I'm so grateful. I'm thankful because you know it, it's not easy for artists, to, you know, to continue to stay relevant for so long. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm definitely grateful and thankful. Ten years has gone fast, to be honest. Because Azon to, it feels like it was a long ago for, mm. for me. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's been 10 years since Azonto dropped and since then it's been back-to-back -back bangers and, you know, and, and collaborations and vibes. Charlie, it, it, see, the issue, is the, the main point is that when Azonto was popping up, you were part mm -hmm. of the individuals who propagated the story beyond the uh, Ghana. You made sure the yeah. story, the, if the Londoners love Azonto, it was the, yourself and others who made sure that this thing goes on beyond, beyond, beyond. Let's talk about the, the life, the before Azonto. What were you doing before yeah. Azonto? So, uh, obviously, as an artist, you know, uh, with the song that, that becomes a hit, it doesn't mean that's your first song. You know, so before yeah, that, um i've been in you know i was in london just working working being in a studio doing underground shows a lot of underground shows i'll tell you like a lot and um i was also at university um just grinding uh, whilst making music and trying to balance both education and also making music and really like it's just doing shows after shows releasing songs after songs and eventually you know, when God said it was my time, you know, we dropped our zone to and the whole world got shut down, you know. So definitely, I've always been making music. It's always been music for me. Um, the time I had to balance was between music and education, you know. When when you were about to release that Azonto song, were you certain that it was going to be a breakthrough? Or were you like, let me try and see if Ghanaians will love this, or if the world will love this one? No, I wasn't, I wasn't certain. I wasn't certain because there was many other songs before that, that, to me it was also you know great songs and to me it was bangers but you know but I, but I didn't know that i was doing something different because it was like a uk vibe and it was mm. afrobeats and it was ghana do you know what i'm saying we definitely knew that we were doing something different you know to the usual to any other artist um and i guess that came through and it really connected with the world, you know. But we didn't know it was going to go as crazy as it went worldwide from soon as we dropped it. The next day, people in France were da dancing to it. Australia, America, everywhere across Africa, you know. So we didn't think it was going to be that instant and that massive, you know. So we had to literally just, just, just catch up with it and just move. Do you know what I'm saying? But the good thing is, because I'd been doing shows all over the place before that, because I've been making music and okay. prepping myself as an artist, I was ready when the time came. So, uh, can we say that Azonto made you? We can, we can definitely say that that was the breakthrough. Oh, okay. Yes, that was definitely the breakthrough for me. Um, you know, but I always knew that um, my talent was a lot bigger than that one song true you know but it definitely opened the door you know because for me as an artist that song would, was so easy for me it's one of the quickest songs that i've probably made you know so quick for me it was easy but to me i knew that it was opening doors for me to do bigger things so 100 percent, it was the breakthrough song Mm. So now the journey begins. Azonto is a global hit. The global, uh, I'd call it, stardom of uh, the standards of Fito GG begins from Azonto. And that's yeah. where the journey begins. You become a global icon. Everybody's mentioning your name. You're having yeah. massive views on YouTube. You are creating trends. Tell us the thing. Yeah. Let's talk about the 10 years journey. Uh, what happened next after next after next after next? So people understand how you have not just been okay, but you have suffered through this journey to make sure that your name becomes a global name state. Yeah, yeah. Now, for sure. Okay, so as long as blown, you know, we're getting inquiries for shows every week, you know, and, and we're going to different countries every week. 
you know but one thing that i always was aware of and i had to be conscious of is that i can't get lost i cannot get lost in just doing the shows i have mm. to focus on making the best music that i can make i have to focus on the next one and the next one because to me you know it, I've, I've always been a person for the people so uh, to me i was like this is an opportunity that god has given me and i have to use it to help my people you know so i always knew that it was going to be more than the music every country that i went to you know i'd be you know um creating awareness of ghana i'd be creating awareness of africa so we can change the perception of ghana we can change the perception of the continent so to me it was more than the music so whenever the platform gets higher i get it means i get more audience to educate about africa more audience to represent ghana so it had to be more than the music for me and because of that purpose and that is because of that purpose that kept me going to make the next song after the next song and for me to push it in so many different territories because i was purpose driven do you know what i'm saying so yeah. definitely you know i knew that the music had to keep flowing but i used that to connect me with my purpose of changing the perception of africa and representing ghana so people can actually come to ghana and enjoy themselves because people can actually invest in ghana and and and, and benefit so the, the economy of ghana can benefit rather than you know um them looking at us like we're a charity case you know because that was the perception people used to think that you know africa is a place where you just donate money to its poor people you know we haven't got places where you can enjoy yourself or go on holiday at you know so that became my mission to change that you know and that's what we did you know you saw the year of return you saw how much, crazy that was much, very much but that's because of the work that we've been doing out there and and showing people a different side of ghana different side of africa you know so that's what kept me going and from, from the onset the whole message was this is new africa you had a plan, you had a plan before even the hits came on board no, I didn't actually. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't. But what I knew was that my purpose was for the people. True. You know, I, I already had an ethos that I'm for the people, no matter what. The blessings that I get from God, I use it for the people. I knew that much. And that's what created This Is New Africa. Because when we started doing the shows, going to different countries across africa i was seeing a whole new africa i was seeing you know people enjoying themselves i was seeing business people entrepreneurs i was seeing you know talented musicians i was seeing um a, a lot of amazing creatives you know i was seeing a whole new africa that wasn't shown to the world so i was educated by the countries that i was going to and that's how this is new africa came about because i was seeing a whole new africa than what the media was showing so the idea came after zonto oh, okay. uh, and after traveling and, and going through to the different countries across africa that's how i was like wow there's something new happening right now it's a whole new africa this is new africa tina and that's where the whole joy started where you talk about you even brought in the black dolls of which uh, of which i think yeah. is doing very very well you started branding Thank yourself you. more of the kinti vibe to show the world that yeah. africans are not where we are do you think we have yeah. made progress from 10 years ago related to africa a hundred percent we've made a lot of progress you know um there's more there's more of a connection between True. um africans in africa and the diaspora you know like there's more of a connection because of the music the music has brought us a lot closer whereas before it felt like you know ghana and jamaica is such a far far place, far place and yeah. the relationship between the two countries are so far wide apart it's no longer the same now we have people like popcorn you know coming to ghana because to, to them it's like next door now things have changed so much from 10 years ago it used to be such a big deal but now we have people like damien marley you know that i'm collaborating with and he has plans of coming to ghana he has plans to retire in ghana Ooh. you know these things are, are, are these things never used to happen before true but now it's becoming a reality and and that's what's happened over the 10 years we've gone from changing people's perception 
perception of Africa, changing people's perception of Ghana, to, and it's now becoming a reality where they're now coming to Ghana. All these guys, all these um, celebrities from America coming to Ghana. Michael Blackson came and bought a house in Ghana, and he's, you know, he's planning to relocate in Ghana. This would have never happened 10 years ago, but it's because of the music and the work that we've been doing that's attracted them to now come back to Ghana to now feel like Ghana is not so far because America and Ghana, these celebrities, they were seeing it as such a far place in Africa. They wouldn't even say the name of the country. They would say, I'm going Africa. But right now it's like I'm coming to Ghana. They want to say the name because it's so cool because of the work that we've been doing. So definitely over that past 10 years, the world has become smaller because of the music. You know, Africa and Africans in Africa and Africans outside of Africa have gotten closer. You can see all the Jamaican artists now coming to Ghana. You see the Ghanaian artists collaborating with the Jamaican artists. You see the Ghanaian artists collaborating with American artists. You see people like Skepta coming to Ghana, Steph London coming to Ghana, Ghana yeah. Lethal Bizzle coming to Ghana. This would have never happened 10 years ago, but it's because of the work that we've been doing with the music and the message we've been pushing out there. That's what's encouraged them to come. You know, so we have to really um, understand the power of the music. And, and I'm so thankful for my journey because I know that I used my voice to amplify the greatness of and the potential of Africa. And that's why everybody, you know, you know, they feel the need to want to see everything that I've been talking about. They see the need to want to see where the music is from. You know? Is it the same story that you preach to the likes of Ed Sheeran, who is not a black person, but has taken Ghana as his second home? Is this some of the messages that you pushed out there to him? A hundred percent. I remember when I first bumped into um, Ed Sheeran, it was at a festival that I was performing at, he was performing at, and he was like, your fuse, I love your music. I said to him, oh yeah, if you love my music, then come to Ghana. I got straight to the point. That's why I said to him, if you love my music, then come to Ghana. That's when you get to experience that Afrobeat. And he was like, yes, yeah, sweet, I'll come. That's literally how the conversation went. Mm. And then we just stayed in touch. And then he messaged me saying, yo, Fuse, is the offer still on the table? And that's because of the music and the way that I, I went, I, I, I said to him straight, if you love my music, then you have to come to Ghana because that's where it's from. You know, and he decided to come just because of the fact that the music created that dialogue between me and him. So for sure, that's exactly how, you know, the relationship went with Ed Sheeran. I went straight to the point. I said, yo, come to Ghana if you love the music so much. And that's what he did. Now you try convincing him and now he's even singing songs on his own album in Chi. And that's good. I, I, I singing, used... singing in Chi. Singing yeah. in Chi, man, on his own album. Yeah, you know? That's huge. And um, he, he, he even has the Ghana flag tattooed, tattooed on, on his skin. rib cage. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's heavy. Exactly. That's good. That's mm -hmm. good. Mm. Let's let's come back to your music. Um, over the past ten years, I've released hit songs upon hit songs. Some of your songs have hit. Uh, they have been certified as gold, like Azonto and Antenna, Million Pound Girl, my favorite. Yeah. They just love with you and Sean Paul. It's it's a big tune. Yeah. What goes into you writing songs? Do you think beyond Africa when you are when you sit down or go to studio to record a song? What really influences your writing skills when it comes to music? I think, um, you know, I think being Ghanaian, obviously, and also growing up in London as well. So naturally, when I'm making music, I put myself into the music. So you get both sides of me. Mm. You know, you get me representing Ghana, you get me representing Africa, and you also kind of get me, you, you know, you kind of catch that, okay, um, you know, it's a different sound because of the music that I grew up on. You know, I grew up on high life, of course, hip life, um, grime, hip hop, you know, and, and, you know, and European music as well. Mm. So you kind of, naturally, without me trying, you still get a sense of, you know, music that transcends across just one territory. It transcends across Africa. And I'm grateful to be able to uh, make that kind of music. And to me, it's important that my music transcends across because the message that I'm putting across is not just message for Africa, it's message for non-Africans, for them to see us as, as a respectable place, you know, uh, uh, as a, a place where you can invest in and come to on holiday and give your money to, you know, uh, rather than us being a charity case. So to me, it's important that the music transcends. It's never intentional, mm. but I think how I grew up you know, I was literally made for this mission for me to bring our people back home. That's beautiful. Ten years in existence, ten years of impact. What, has been, what has been your biggest achievement? 
Man, that's, that's going to be hard to say, actually. Um, my, my biggest achievement. Um, but I guess uh, I can say significant achievement more than biggest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay, that's cool. That's cool. Many years, so significant would be like when, you know, I, I won the mobile. Yeah. You know, to me, it was a big deal because it, it, Africa had never been represented like that before. Winning the mobile and performing on national TV. You know, and 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 the way we represented with the kente, you know, we really represented song, and, and that had never been done on national TV before. You know, so to me that was a significant mm. significant moment, and I was able to talk about Africa. I was able to talk about you know changing the perception of where I was from. So to me that was a very significant moment. Um, and then other other moments to me significant. Other significant moment to me is when I linked up with Wycliffe as well. To me, that was yeah, a that's huge, that was man. a very important moment for the, me because the Antenna remix. that was like my second single with Antenna. Yeah, and then you know I, I had a show in um, in Albuquerque, and I, um, Wycliffe was on the same show, and we got to as soon as I saw him, and I told him I'm from Ghana, you know, and this is my mission to change the perception of the continent and to and to improve the continent so we can invest in it. And as soon as me and him, we kind of, you know, had a conversation, he, he started telling me about his journey and what he's doing for Haiti, you know. So the way we got together was also special. And then we got to do the music. And then obviously to me, that was a, a life-changing moment as well because it was like oh. a, a massive collaboration on Afrobeats that had never been done before. True. You know what I'm saying? So that was a significant moment for me. And that led on to other major, major achievements as well. Mm. Uh, talking about collaborations, you have had some of the biggest with yourself and Sean Paul. You have done some, yeah. uh, some with uh, Tinty Strider. You have done a song with yeah. Ed Sheeran. The names is on yeah. and on and on and on. At least yeah. I see for the past 10 years, you have been at, uh, achieving greater height. What has been your lowest, your lowest, your lowest th like, thing to happen to you in this industry in the past 10 years? Um, it's it's hard for me to count anything as a, as you know as a low because I feel like it's more of a lesson. Um, but I would say that um, prior to you know to, to my first hit prior to mm. Adonto, yeah. it was very frustrating as an artist because you know as an artist and it's not easy for artists. You keep investing in the music, you keep investing in your videos, investing in your studio sessions, investing in your mixing and mastering, and you feel like every time you're not getting the results that you need you know i feel like it can be very frustrating so i would say my lowest or my biggest lessons were right at the beginning before i even blew up as an artist and then if there's any artists listening or any creative listening never give up continue pushing continue pushing and be consistent and keep going and i promise you you're going to see life just don't give up so to me, my lowest moments would have been prior because it was so frustrating. You know, you just want your music to be out there and it's not happening. But eventually it did. And, 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 and it happened at the right time because God was prepping me for the journey. God was prepping me for the journey. And now 10 years later, we're still here and we're still representing big. You know, so definitely it's been a journey. Mm. And, and one, of the, one of the individuals who has been with you throughout this journey has to be with Mr. Harkett. Um, we, we knew, yes, at the Mr. point in time, at, at the point in time, we even knew his name more than everybody. We were singing his name every time yeah, because yeah. you constantly were <laughs> mentioning his name. Harkett. Charlie, that I guy. And, and ten, yeah, ten, years, 10 years on, uh, what has, has it been for you? Loyalty, management-wise, because you formed the management with yeah, him. Yeah, no, Harkett. Hackett, I, I, I've known Hackett's, you know, we grew, I grew up with Hackett in the Whoa. same neighborhood in London. Love. So we were childhood friends mm. from early. So it's, it's not just about business or music. Oh, okay. He's like family. We're like family. And he grew to become my manager because, you know, everything that I do, he'd help me. You know, so from early, he's been the one that's been supporting from day minus one to now together so it's more than music you know we're more family and i'm I'm grateful that we're able to do business together because to me he's one of the most smartest managers that i've ever met one of the most 
intelligent individuals that I've ever met in my life. And I'm grateful that he's been part of the journey. And he has been so instrumental in pushing Afrobeats to where it is now. Because he was the one that would take the music to the radio stations in the UK when they didn't know what it was called. They didn't know what the music was called. They were just like, what is this? And he had to educate them that, that this is Afrobeats. This is what's happening right now. Do you understand? So he had to go and educate these people and push the music to all these radio stations that had never heard of that kind of music before. You know, so he was definitely very instrumental in the journey. Mm. Uh, you, you guys putting together a record label. I know record labels comes with its all ups and downs. And as an artist, you yes. signing an artist, other artists on. How difficult was it for you? Because at a point in time, you had uh, a Tiffany on. Who and who were you able to yeah. sign on your record label? Yeah, I mean, having a record label is never going to be easy. It's just like running any other business. Sure. It's never going to be easy. It's going to be ups and downs. It's going to be greatness. You know, but again, you got to take the lows as a lesson. And the highs, you know, you got to be grateful for it and, and see how you can improve and even do bigger things. So definitely um, having Hackett, you know, definitely helps with, you know, pushing with the label. And even now, you know, moving forward, there's more artists that, you know, that we're signing so we can, you know, um, um, use the resources that we have mm. to give them the opportunity to make world-class music so we can push it to the world. So, yeah, I'm very excited to work with more talent in Ghana. Currently, we have fellow Nuna yeah, on board I'm right, board, right yeah, now. True, true, true. That's she just recently signed and I'm so excited for her because she has some amazing music that we're about to drop. So, yeah, man, I'm going to need everyone to support fellow Nuna right now. Um, and also Ghana needs more support from from us from labels you know I'm, I'm i'm one of the main i'm one of the people that's willing to you know put everything on the line to to push Ghana talent so i'm very excited to work with more Ghana talent moving forward as well mm. uh quick one do, do you do you listen to music from takrade the western region do you listen to music from takrade yeah i do i do uh do you have any favorites do you have any names apart from the coffee can and the rest that we know that they are huge uh do you do we do you listen to so us? actually so i do actually but obviously um kenata is my guy um true, i have true. a song with kenata coming out next week actually. whoa whoa yeah. this is yeah, this yeah, is an yeah. opener a song with kenata coming up next week yes yeah yeah so um, I, I I think I'll give you guys the exclusive actually, so I, ah, I'll get you. I'll get Hacker to send it to you guys. True, true, but yeah, man. we have we have a come over next week, next week Friday. So that's I'm excited huge. for that. So that's yeah, it's huge. funny that you should talk about yeah, that's the artists. Huge. Yeah, oh, that's huge. <laughs> so now we, we know the ten years. Ten years has been growth for you. It has been where you're able to build your stability. You've built your name in the industry now globally. Everybody knows Fuse ODG, and everybody knows Mr. Hackett. We are taking a look at the next 10 years for uh, your record label, for the artist yourself. We know recently you, you joined a group with uh, Heavy K, right? You put, yes. 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 So for the next 10 years, should we expect you to go back as a solo artist or to be yourself and Heavy K doing music, upon music? And what's, what's the dream for the next 10 years? What's the project? Yeah, so the next 10 years, I'm definitely going to be um, doing more collaborations and, and diving into other types of sounds. You know, I like exploring with different sounds. True, true. Um, so for the next 10 years, I want to be making more groundbreaking sounds with different artists across the world. And then I wanted to be touring more. Um, and as well as that, again, it's more than music for me, even though music is at the center. I want to, I want to be building more schools. You know, we built the school, um, built the school in Akosombo. Yeah. I want to be building more schools across Ghana. Um, I want to bring more people back home to invest. Um, yeah, the, um, the, there's so many other businesses that we're working on as well. So I'm, I'm excited for the next 10 years. Musically, I've got some of the craziest music that's already coming. But for the next 10 years, I'm, I want to be traveling across the world and working with so many different artists and bringing through more talent from Ghana to the world. And, and look, I see if it's a 10 years that we all can't wait to enjoy with you because it's going to be exciting from the look of things. Yeah, no, definitely exciting, man. Definitely exciting. But yeah, we have to celebrate this moment right now. True, true. You know, because life is too short and it's important that we celebrate our moments, you know. And so for the 10-year celebration, what do you have any projects in stock? Do you have any plans like a... a yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So we obviously, like I said, dropping a song next week um, um, for, Kenata? For, for, for Africa. And it's got Kenata on there. So it's funny that, oh, you know, large, we, we started large. talking about him. 
And then um, we're, we're going to be doing like an anniversary. We're doing an anniversary party um, in in the UK. Okay. And when I come to Ghana, we'll do um, a 10 year anniversary as well in Ghana. Right. Right. All right. So, uh, people of Takwadi, you're listening to myself and Fuse ODG. Fuse, uh, people of Takwadi, have you, have you been to Takwadi before? I've been to Takwadi before. Yes, I have. But it's usually, no. So, I haven't been to Takwadi itself. It's usually on my way to Axim. Uh, yeah. So I've gone. I've gone to Axim a few times. Okay. Um. During during obviously you know my time as a you know, I mean I'm still the tourism ambassador, but in the early stages we were doing a lot of traveling. Oh, okay. And Axim was one of the places that we went to. Um. But I actually haven't spent time in Takwadi yet, so I need to. You have to. So you have to. Yeah, so send me the invite, man. I'm ready. We will do that certainly. We will do that. When you drop to Ghana, you apply, at least you can push your and there's a lot of happiness in Takwadi. Yeah, no, it's very important. It's yes. very important. Yes, yes, yes. Future people are listening to you, taking this Takwadi. They love your music. They love your growth, and they want to listen to you. Your last words of encouragement. Your words that you're, 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 you're telling the fans of Fuse ODG. It's Fuse. Yes, this is your boy Fuse ODG. Big shout out and so much love to all my people in Takrade. Thank you guys so much for the support from day one up to this day. It's been 10 years since Fuse ODG has been in the game. And it's because of you guys from Azonto to Antenna to Badadambad to um, Brefier to Down on One, you know, to the, the uh, spanner you know all these songs that we've yeah, made over yeah. the years is because of you guys and i'm grateful for the support and let's continue to push ghana to the world you know i'm always representing ghana to the fullest and bringing our people back home and making sure that you know ghana is represented in the best way out there but it's all because of you guys support and the foundation so i want to thank you guys so much thank you guys for an amazing 10 years and this is to the next 10 years and let's continue to take over the world rah, rah, rah. ah tina so you're grateful for joining us this morning on the show i'm sure we'll be in touch and we'll plan of uh, a, a vacation in december come around town and we we'll talk time, more one time one time i'll be there Charlie, happy yeah, anniversary man. happy anniversary fees uh thank you bro uh, thank you too i love her uh, sure. rah, 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 rah.